Hi guys, Tasha here from Scruffy Fam. Um, so today we are going to be talking about this plant here in a little bit more depth. Um, this is Comfrey and uh, I'm very happy to have this growing wild in our yard. Um, so I was thinking about obviously with the twins, my belly's growing a lot bigger than it normally would and um, I have normal lotion. It's just cutting it and so I realized hey comfrey is great for regenerating skin cells so why don't we make use of this giant plant that we have over here we actually had to cut it out it was being kind of overshadowed by some other um, plants that were over here but as you can see it's a pretty big patch so I think this has been here for a little while um, so the way that you can tell it's comfrey is these flowers some of them are starting to drop off but you'll see they actually grow in spirals. So that's one of the telltale. Both comfrey and borage have flowers that grow like that. And then also the leaves have this pattern that kind of look like skin cells, which is another like what we call a doctrine of signatures that help us know that this is a good plant for helping heal skin. So what do you do with it? Um, there's actually a lot of uses for comfrey in the garden. You can use it as a mulch, you can use it as a compost uh, activator. We use our chicken manure for that, um, but if you don't have chickens and you have a comfrey plant, this also helps to kind of kickstart the breakdown process of everything else in your compost pile. Um, you can also make a compost tea out of it. Also great at attracting pollinators. Um, we actually have a couple bumblebees over here checking it out as I speak, so hopefully I don't disrupt them too much. Um, so, uh, the other thing is that when you look at the leaves, they are fairly well attached. They don't stick out with a stem. I'm rusty on my official botanical terms, but you can see what I mean. Um, okay, so what do you do with it? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making an oil with this. Um, and I'm going to be doing a fairly quick infusion, which you can do um, on the stove top. I'm actually going to be trying it in my Instant Pot. Um, normal oil infusions can take anywhere from four to six weeks. However, four to six weeks from now uh, is probably going to be too late for helping with any stretch marks or anything like that. So we're going to be doing a quick one, and I figured that's not the most common way that people make oil infusions. So. I wanted to show you guys the process. So what we're going to be doing, I do have some leaves that I've already collected, but we're going to be getting more. Um, as you can tell, this plant is pretty top heavy, starting to fall over a bit. So I think we're going to lighten its load some. Um, and then what you want to do is after you pick the leaves, you want to let it wilt for about 24 hours, at least overnight just to try to get as much of the moisture out as possible. When you're doing oil infusions, you never want to have any water in the process. Um, it's going to make your oil go rancid, it can introduce mold, all kinds of botulism, bad stuff. So since we're going to be using this topically, it's not as much of a concern. If I was going to be making an oil that I was going to be eating, I would definitely make sure that the leaves were dried all the way through. However, um, like I said, because it's topical, we can kind of take a few shortcuts to get this done faster. All right, so it doesn't really matter the size of the leaf that we grab for um, this purpose because we're making the oil. However, if you wanted to make a tea, Comfrey is really, really great. Uh, it, one of the names that it used to be known as is actually knit bone. Um, and so if you have any wounds, you can also take it as a tea. Now it has uh, kind of a bad reputation and fair one. Um, it does have a component that's called pyrolizidine alkaloids, which can be toxic to your liver. However, the studies that they did to come up with this um, kind of extracted that, concentrated it far beyond what any herbalist would normally be using, and then said, aha, look, the rats have liver failure. Um, so in the context of what we would normally in the context of how we would normally take comfrey tea you're not going to be getting those same levels to the point where it could be toxic unless you already had some sort of pre-existing condition like um, 
if you already had existing liver disease, obviously this is probably something to stay away from. But if you did want to take a tea for internal use, it's better to get the smaller fresh leaves. Um, they just haven't been around quite as long and so they're not going to have as many of the alkaloids built up in them. Um, for topical use, you can use um, even these really big guys back here that you wouldn't necessarily want to make tea with, but um, for, like I said, for our purposes today, it's totally fine. And you can also use comfrey root. Uh, it has a lot of the same properties. Um, it's the allantoin is the compound that we're actually looking for that's like amazing for helping skin health. It's also in the root, but the root has a lot more of those alkaloids. So if we did want to go that route, we would make sure um, that the root is only for topical use. But honestly, if you have a fresh plant, you get so many leaves and it's so prolific that there's not really any need to go digging up the roots. And the roots of this guy is probably eight to 10 feet deep. So if you really wanted to get the roots, um, probably do so on a shaded day and have a lot of water because it's gonna be a task. All right, so I think that's enough for the information about the comfrey leaf. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these leaves here. And like I said, I already have some leaves that are wilted. So these ones I'm probably going to put in my herb dryer um, and let them dry all the way out. And then we will um, just keep them on hand as dry herbs for either tea or more likely because I have little kids and I wouldn't want to run the risk of anything with their liver, would probably be making more oils and salves um, for all the bumps, bruises, scrapes, if they do break a bone. It's great for all that stuff. So it's a really great one to have around with kids. Um, just probably try to keep it external use only. All right guys, so it has actually been a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. Um, life got kind of busy, so we are several days after. So our comfrey has indeed um, finished drying. However, this exact process that I'm gonna go through today, you can totally do with like freshly wilted leaves. Um, and I'll make sure if there's anything different that I kind of mentioned that so you guys can do that if you need to do a really quick infusion. Um, but either way, this is definitely going to be quicker than the, you know, one to two weeks that you usually take to make an herbal oil. So what we want to do first is we want to take these whole leaves and we want to cut them down into smaller pieces. Um, some herbalists like to powder them, but I find it really difficult to get a clear oil at the end of the whole process. So I just like to cut them into really small pieces. The more surface area you have around each piece, the more of that medicine you're gonna be able to extract. So now that we have these uh, chopped up, we're going to put them in the jar. And we're just going to keep doing that probably in smallish batches um, until the jar is all the way full. All right, so this is probably about how full we want the jar. We do want to make sure that we have some space to have some headroom of oil above the herb, just to make sure that everything stays completely submerged. Um, anything that's exposed to oxygen can introduce mold and all kinds of nastiness. So um, you can kind of push it down a little bit and then we're ready for the next step. So most of what we're gonna be using for this is just your normal extra virgin olive oil. Um, and this is kind of the standard that a lot of people will use. It's cheap, it's easy to get um, as far as oils go. And uh, it gives you a really great final product. It has a nice long shelf life, it's not too oily, it, does, it absorbs really well. So olive oil is a really great one to go with, however, if you want to add a little bit more for pampering, I also have a bottle of sweet almond oil. Um, and this one is a really light one that is also going to absorb into the skin really well. And then also, I have some jojoba oil. And this is kind of the gold standard as far as um, like skincare oils go. 
It has the same pH as human skin, so it absorbs really quickly. You don't get any of that greasiness or anything. The only downside is it can be really expensive. So that's why I have small bottles of these, and then we're just gonna top off the rest with normal olive oil. So there we go, we've got all of our oils in there. Um, and also because this one is specifically gonna be for pregnancy stretch marks, um, another one that would be really great to add in here is rosehip seed oil. I don't have any on hand, unfortunately. Um, and that one can also be expensive also, but it would be really great if you're gonna be making this for the same reason I am. All right, so next is we are going to put this in the Instant Pot, and I'll show you how to get that set up. Okay, so for the instant pot, we have the metal trivet in here so that the pot, or so the mason jar isn't sitting directly on the heat. And then we're gonna put this in here gently. I'm just doing one today, but you could do uh, multiple different batches if you wanted to at the same time. All right, and then we're gonna take our water. And we're gonna fill this up along the outside like halfway up the jar. So we're gonna be doing this as a water bath method, um, which means that the water is gonna get heated up by the Instant Pot, and then it's gonna heat up the oil inside the jar without the oil in the jar itself getting heated up. So the yogurt setting on the Instant Pot heats it to about 110 degrees, which is perfect for oils. We definitely don't want to go a whole lot higher than that because the heat can actually make that oil go rancid, especially if you're using some of the lighter cosmetic oils in there. Um, if you don't have one with a yogurt setting, you can use the slow cooker setting. You just want to set it on low. Um, it'll be a little bit warmer than is ideal so you probably would only want to let it go for like two hours or so um, just so that it doesn't get overheated but I do have a yogurt setting so we're gonna set that so we're gonna go yogurt on less all right so we're gonna set it for four hours I am gonna leave the lid off um, this is only at 110 degrees so I'm not super worried about getting a whole ton of steam However, you really want to make sure that there's no condensation that could get into the oil itself since we have the jar open. All right, so we're going to let this sit for four hours. Um, and then when that's done, we're going to let it totally cool off. And then we will come back and strain everything out and have our oil ready to go. All right, so we are back. It's after dinner. Kids are in bed. So it's definitely been the four hours. Um, plus, we've let it completely cool down to room temperature. So what we're gonna do now is we need to strain the leaves out of the oil. So how we do that is we've got a measuring cup here, and we have a strainer. If you have one that's a little bit smaller than this, probably would be perfect, but we'll make do today. Um, and then inside of this is some cheesecloth. I think I have it folded over three or four times, because um, you wanna make sure that you're gonna catch all those leaf bits. Um, if there's a little bit of sediment at the bottom, I'm not super worried because I'm just using this for myself. Um, but like if you were going to give it away or sell it, you uh, might even want to strain it again just to make sure you get it totally clear. Alright, so we're going to do this. I'm going to pour the oil in. It's kind of taking on this nice... oil as we can out of the jar okay so then what I like to do <laughs> rest this on the belly is kind of fold these corners up and we want to press this to try to get 
as much of the oil as we can out of the leaves. I can kind of see down underneath because the leaves will have absorbed some of the oil, so now we're trying to just get some of that back. We're not ever gonna get all of it back, but. Um, oops. See. You're never gonna get all of it, but as much as you can is good. So now we're just gonna set this cheesecloth aside. And unfortunately, when you are um, straining oils, you can't reuse the cheesecloth. If you're doing um, like tinctures or teas or anything, you can just wash it out and use it again. But oils just absorb so much of it. They're really not good a second time. So unfortunately we are done with this guy for today. And also normally you can compost the plant material that you were infusing. However, again, because this was in an oil, oils don't break down in compost very well. So we're also gonna have to just throw that away. Um, otherwise it goes rancid and can attract critters to your compost pile. And that's not really what we want. So you can see here, we've got our finished oil. And actually the cheesecloth did a pretty good job. There's not too much sediment in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the jar and we're just gonna bottle this and label it. Okay, so I have a 16 ounce jar here. Um, it's best to store them in dark colored glass bottles and then keep them out of heat and light just to prolong the shelf life for as long as you possibly can. This did come to be about 12 ounces of oil. So this is a 16 ounce jar, so it'll fill it up most of the way, but not all the way. Um, and if you wanted to at this point, if you wanted to turn it into a salve, you could put it back in the instant pot using the exact same water bath method that we did before. You would just add some beeswax. And usually it's one cup of oil to one ounce of beeswax. Um, you can kind of play with that depending on whether you want it to be softer or firmer, but that's kind of the general concept. Um, or if you wanted to, like now is when I could add essential oils or if I wanted any um, like additional fragrance or any benefits from those. I could add those now if I wanted to also. And this um, measuring cup, I actually don't remember where I got it. I've had it for a long time. But it's really handy for stuff like this because um, it has a nice narrow spout to pour out of. You don't have to use one of these. Um, this is just what I have for all my medicine making. If you have a funnel that'll fit in the glass jar, that would work perfectly fine too. to find my labels but we will make sure that we label that never ever trust yourself to remember you will not ask me how I know um, and so today we use comfrey there's a lot of other herbs out there that you can also infuse into oil some for actually eating like if you wanted to do an infused chili oil you could totally do that with olive oil um, some other great skincare ones are like calendula for example is amazing if you get sunburns or if you just have like red, dry, irritated skin. So definitely, you know, go check out some recipes. And if you want any more information, you kind of want to explore this concept a little bit more. Um, this book is pretty much like the go-to for every beginning herbalist. Um, it talks about how to do several different varieties of the oil infusion. It doesn't talk about the Instant Pot, but he does reference a yogurt maker, which is pretty much what we did. Um, but also like alcohol infusions, tea, he has all kinds of crazy stuff in there. So if you want to explore making herbal medicine at home more, I definitely recommend getting that book. And if you are interested in doing more like natural skincare type stuff, even things that you can make yourself at home, um, one book that I really like is the Organic Body Care Recipes book. Um, this one just goes through a billion different recipes and things that you can make and ideas and explaining some of the different oils and the herbs and even essential oils that you can use. And then if you just kind of want to dip your toe into the water and just kind of see if you want to do this, um, Rosemary Gladstar has a really great simple 
little book that kind of goes into how to do like facials or baths at home. So those are some of my favorite resources. Um, definitely recommend that you guys get out there, try this, check out some of those other herbs. All right guys, so I hope that you liked that video. I hope that you found it very informative. Um, if you did, please go ahead and like the video for the YouTube algorithms and um, subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss anything else that we have coming up. Um, oh yeah. And make sure that you follow us over on Instagram, uh, especially today is week 35. So any day now we'll be having the twins. Um, and so we'll definitely be posting some pictures and that kind of thing on there. You'll definitely know there first if anything happens before it ends up on YouTube. Um, so if you want to check that out and follow along with our family, feel free to do that. That is um, at the Scruffy Fam, and then my stuff is at the Scruffy Mama. Hey, right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.